Hello everyone, welcome to GT Post intro videos. My name is John Baker and I'm one of the UI designers at Gamma. Today we will be discussing basic usage and helpful tips for report files, otherwise known as GUs. We'll be going over implicit versus explicit data within the files, basic plot creation and addition of data to those plots, and a brief demonstration of using the report file to help with comparing results from two different models. The first question we have to answer is, what is a report file? So to begin, we'll open one up. And to do that, you can go over here at the top left on the toolbar and click the New Document tab. And you'll see that we've added a new pane on the left, and this pane right here is the GU. Now one thing to notice is that it has the exact same folder structure, or tree structure, that we replicate here within Part Output dialog, or if you like the old school method, here within this older tree. Now one thing to keep in mind is that because we replicate this structure, you cannot simply go in here and say, I would like to have the contact gap data set, and add it in and create a blank plot. You have to actually either create from scratch a plot or drag in the plot that contains this data set. That's because this data set and this plot are two separate entities. They can both have separate properties, and so we need both to be able to generate a plot for you. So what is a report file for? A report file is a way to share and manipulate implicit and explicit plots. Implicit plots point to specific data sources, such as these three different GDXs down here at the bottom. And these plots will update to show you any changes from each of these respective sources if you rerun your models. For example, let's take this balls and box model here. If we were to say rerun this model and run a different case, we might want to check out to see, well, what's the change in, say, the contact gap? So to do that, we'll switch to no map, just because we're interested in plotting. We'll go down here and we'll make a snapshot. Now what this is doing is it's creating a separate plot. Now this is explicit, so this plot will not update, but the contact gap plot will. So when we switch back here, check case, we're now running a separate case, we'll run our model. Once this model is finished running and we view the results, we should be able to see side by side the new updated plot with a 32 millimeter radius side by side with the contact gap of the original. So we'll go back, we'll re review the plot, and here we go. We have a different contact gap profile, and we can see how it's changed from the original case that we ran. Previously I mentioned that this plot here, this snapshot, is an explicit version of the contact gap plot. So what's the difference between implicit and explicit? Well, you cannot modify the underlying data of implicit plots, and you can see that by going over to the data set here, right-clicking on it, and selecting View Data. You'll see that all of the data points within this plot are colored this yellow color. Now this is GT's way of showing you that you cannot modify this data in any way. So the question is, well, how do you modify it? You have two options. One, you can right click again on this data set and ask for us to make it explicit. If you were to do that, we bring up this little dialog which asks if you would, if you would like to sever all of the links to this data set so that it will not update if you were to rerun your model. Or what you can do is you can add a plot. So we'll add here. We'll right click again, we'll add a data set. And you'll notice that we default to an explicit data set. Just click next and finish. And then from here, we can do the most basic of entries. Hit OK, and we have ourselves an explicit plot. But the last thing that we're going to go over today is how to utilize groups within your GU in order to help with analyzing results from multiple results files. So currently, we have one single group in our GU, and it's pointing to a single results file, balls and box. To add another group, we simply click here. We click Add Group. And so what we can do is we can then go directly to our other two results files, SI4 So Basic, a simple engine model, and then Mild Hybrid, a vehicle model. And so we'll take in the engine speed from the Mild Hybrid model, and we'll go over to our engine model, and we'll bring in the case RLT plot for BSFC. Now, you can do a couple of things here. You can simply double click on each of these individually and view their plots. So you have the efficiency plot for the engine here. Or what you can do is you can go up to the group itself and double click on that. Now that will give you a shared layout. So here you can see that we default to a two by two shared layout. So we can go and change that. Let's say we want one by two. 
And this is a quick and easy way of showing multiple things at once. And remember, these are implicit plots. So if I were to rerun one or both of these models, then all I need to do is double click here on this group again, and these results will update. So let's say we make a little change in our vehicle model to decrease mass or change transmission ratio, which will move this engine speed up or down. Let's say it brings these the engine speed average down from, let's say about 2,400 down to say 2,000 RPM. But then we can come down and immediately see where exactly that'll put us in the sweet spot of engine efficiency for our vehicle model. So that is it for this GT Post intro video. I hope you learned a lot today from watching us. If you have any other questions or interests in GT Suite, please check out our other videos.